are here at Legion Stadium in Sylacauga, Alabama with the 2A South representative head coach, Adam Fawcett of B.B. Comer. And coach, we visited with you, you know, several times over the last couple of years and we've been singing your praises since the first time I came down here and I seen how you talked to the guys. Um, first time I visited with you, you talked to the guys. Actually, your message was about Christ and, and how doing the little things equal up to the big things. Well, you're on the eve of the biggest thing there is, which is the state championship game. Coach, just uh, if you can put into words, take us back to how the season's all transpired. Uh, man, the, se the season, first off, it's flown by. So uh, it seems like we were just uh, sweating to death and Dave were getting beat and uh, all of a sudden we're here. So, uh, you know, season-wise, I, I feel like we've, for us to be 12-2 and two, uh, and, and we, we win the region, first time we'd won the region in 27 years, uh, and then just to be be here where we are, you know, it's it's really a blessing and and a, and a tribute to to our guys and their buy-in and the commitment that they have uh, to the program. So uh, we've had some ups and downs, um, you know. With the, with the when the region came when the regions came out uh, I, and looking for non-region games, uh, you know, years five years ago anybody would play us, and and then we we were able, we've been able to win some games and have some have some success over the past couple of years. So I go looking for region games, and nobody nobody was answering the call. So um, we ended up playing uh, Chillsburg, Daveville, and Sachs, and uh, which is ironic. All three of them are in the same region in 3A. So, uh, but Daveville and Sachs got got the best of us in week zero, and then week five, and um, since the Sachs game. The Sacks game, we get beat 28 to nothing. And we, you know, in coaching term, we never got off the bus. And uh, we, since then, uh, it's been it's been a different team. Our guys have really matured and, and grown up. And uh, they they study a lot more film. They, they work a lot harder in the weight room, work a lot harder at practice. And, and their commitment level has shown that, that they didn't like that feeling. So, um, you know, to, and then you get into you get to the playoffs and, and anything can happen in the playoffs and uh, because we were the one seed we, we traveled we were at home obviously in the first round traveled in round two and then the way the brackets worked out we've been at home uh, up until this point and uh, the the community support here and the the just the support from uh, we call them Tiger Nation uh, I've, I've coined a new new term the coma crazies uh, as of a few weeks ago because there's there's just so many people that are out uh, supporting our, our guys and supporting the program and um, you know when you when you turn around on Friday night it's like last Friday you turn around there's 2,000 people at a 2A football game and they're all screaming for your guys and and cheering your guys on man it, it means something and uh, you know I, I truly stand by the fact that this, this is more than just football um, there, there's a meaning to this and there's there's a a lot of in-depth stuff it's, it's more than just a sport and um, we've been able to see a lot of people a lot of people support our guys that, that have no ties to Comer football at all and um, it's just special it's a special time special uh, opportunity for our guys uh, this the last time uh, the last time the region was won in 95 and that same year uh, they played in the state championship so uh, <clears throat> we've, we've had some of the, some of the 95 team guys come back uh, and, and visit with our guys and talk to them throughout the season. Uh, we've had some guys, uh, the, some of those 95 guys were here last week for the game, and they, they were as pumped up as the kids were. So it, it's exciting. It's a special time. To bring all that back together, <clears throat> it's got to be a special time for you, Coach. And we, I kind of seen this coming, and I, you know, I talked about it last year, and uh, I, I knew you just, just seeing what kind of character you and your staff had, and then you mix that in with some pretty good athletes you guys yeah. have here. The way you – I mean, I put that post out last year about you guys feeding the kids over the mm -hmm. summer, how special that was. Yeah. That post was shared hundreds of times, and reached thousands of people. Talk about that family atmosphere you provide here at BB Comer for your guys. Yeah, I, I think, you know, fa family is important for us, and, and the bond is important. And it, it starts just in, in my family. My, my wife teaches at the school. She's a 10th and 12th grade English teacher. Both my sons are there in, in the school. Uh, my oldest son's a little 8th grader playing football, which is – very stressful for me, by the way. Uh, <laughs> yelling at your son and then having to, you know, deal with it when you get home. So, uh, but uh, but it, it's the the whole buildup of, of 
everything involved. It's so much, you know, so much goes on in these kids' lives that's outside of football. And um, you really have to understand the kids before they'll even give you any kind of uh, leniency on what you want them to do on the football field. So uh, when I got here five years ago, <clears throat> we started the senior dinner program uh, and we feed the seniors every Thursday night. Um, but, you know, if we play on Friday, we have to change some scheduling up or whatever if we play on Thursdays. But uh, we try to get that done every time. And uh, it's just grown and grown and grown. And uh, we've done that this year um, and, and we'll continue to do that uh, as, as time progresses and, and as the years uh, continue. But uh, the senior dinners, it's, it's very seldom, football very seldom comes up. You know, we, we discuss life, we discuss future, we discuss, you know, um, a, a few weeks ago, uh, we all sat at a table and helped, uh, help one of our cheerleaders, uh, type a scholarship essay, you know, so <laughs> That's awesome. you know, she, she was asking for, for wordage and, um, I'm good at, I'm good at putting words together and, uh, my wife's good at taking the comma splices out of it. So, uh, you know, we, we work together and help that help out. But, uh, but again, it's, it's just not, it's not about football. It's not, it's so much about those kids and, and just being there for them and, and helping them and my careers in my career i've always been i've always been about the kids too you know um last, two summers ago i actually had the privilege of um i i, I got ordained uh to to do weddings and, awesome. and one of my former quarterbacks uh asked me <clears throat> we were we were fit kayak fishing one day and he said i gotta ask you a question Will you, will you do the wedding? And I'm like, man, yeah. that, that's an honor. So, believe so I, I've done that. Uh, I, I ordained his wedding. Uh, I did one of my assistant coaches weddings. So again, it's just, it, it's, it's such a, a good feeling knowing that you're making a difference and, and that uh, football is just a microcosm of it. At, at some point in time, all this is over. At some point in time, you're not going to put on cleats anymore. You're not going to have to practice anymore. Um, you're not gonna have to be in the weight room anymore, and, and then and then real world hits you, and, and and the adversity of the real world is really really tough sometimes. You know, you think you think hearing one more sprint is tough. Wait, <laughs> wait till you get into some real world situations, and, and you have to hear some of those things. So, uh, so the, the guys have bought into that. Um, I think the the biggest thing, and, and people ask this all the time, why why is there success here? Why is there success? The biggest thing is that we want to be here, like. Like, I truly want to be here, and and I enjoy being here. I, I love it here. Um, my wife's from Silicon, and she's a Cumberland graduate. So so we're here, you know, and, and in, in the coaching world, <clears throat> and even, you know, there, there's rumors going around now about certain things, you know, oh, he may go here, he may go there. In the coaching world, I've been there and done that. You know, I, I've been at a, at a 7 a school where I made a lot of money, and I was – things just weren't good, and it didn't work out. So – uh, man, we, we enjoy being here. My youngest is in sixth grade, and, and we have no intentions of going anywhere. That's a beautiful thing right there, Coach. Yeah. Uh, coach, now, you reminded me of what Chris Yeager told me one time. Uh, uh, he read a book called It All Goes Back Into the Box. He's talking about no matter what kind of trophies you mm -hmm. win, no matter what accolades you have coaching football, it all goes back into the box uh, at the end of the day. And um, including ourselves, yeah. so to speak. No but it, but it also during that time you learn these lessons. That it reminds me a lot of about, about oh, yeah. that. It's a good message. Yes, uh, the coach diving into this season. I mean, you guys are about to play uh, five, and everybody around the state knows five and yes. what they've done. They had, had the nation's longest winning streak mm -hmm. last year. They've won uh, five state championships uh, since 2014 and played for several others. Yes. Um, what is it? You've seen from those guys, not not just on film this year, but over the last few years uh, that you can speak on. Well, the big thing is the tradition that they have there. You know, that's when, when you look at small high school programs and, and something that you want to you know grow into. That's a program you look at. That's a program you check into and you say, hey, what are they doing right? You know, what what's Coach Benefield and his staff doing right up there to to be able to consistently be there, consistently get after, and consistently. Uh, be in the mix and um, you know so so as a as a guy that, that is committed to being here you know you you always you want to you want to dig into that and see and um, <clears throat> the the neat thing about it is I, I've just recently had the chance to officially meet Coach Benefield and he's as humble a guy as you can meet you know he's just just a good guy and uh, you know meeting meet him in, in Montgomery and talking to him and 
and, and just you know getting preparing for the game and everything else. Uh, great guy. He runs a great program. Uh, guys, you know, just in watching film, his guys are very disciplined. Um, they they love what they do. Uh, they're good at what they do, and, and that carries over. And, and I'm sure you know, I'm sure that carries over for them after football as well. You know, I. I I guarantee you he's got a lot of success, a lot of success stories about his guys that have nothing to do with football. So, um, so seeing that that effort and seeing seeing how they do things and, and just the grit that they have uh, is very impressive. Let's talk about this BB Comer team. And you mentioned the sacks loss and play guys play Jonathan Miller. There's no shame losing those guys. Yeah. They were semi semifinalists and lost about to skin their teeth to Piedmont last year in three. Of them. So there's no no shame there, coach. But uh, after that loss, something clicked. Something happened. What was it? Can you put a finger on it, or is it something jailed this team? You know, I, after that loss, we we had a conversation in the locker room, and um, it wasn't pleasant. Uh, it was just more so of a challenge, and, and challenging the guys, and and you know, the the kid. What gets our guys is, and, and it's you know, if a, if a kid get, gets in trouble in the hallway or something, you say. The, the key words that get, gets our guys every time is, you're better than that. And for some reason, that stings. Man, I, it stings our guys hard. If I, and I'll, hey, you're better than that. And I can whisper it. I can say it loud. It stings. And I told them, I said, y'all are all better than this. And and I think they took that to heart. Uh, some of our older guys, some of our some of our seniors, Zach Carpenter and Brandon Blankenship, uh, really stepped up and, and upped their game and up upped – up their leadership roles. Um, Devin Harvey and Kamor Harris, who are big time playmakers for us on both sides of the ball, they started taking it a lot more serious and, and just seeing. I guess I guess they kind of saw the potential that we can have. And uh, and I went back and I told them uh, in August we we had some situations where you know, I didn't feel like we were focused. And I said, you know, potentially y'all could be pretty good. Potentially we could be ten and zero, but potentially we could be five and five too. So potential is just a word, you know. You you have to put in the effort. You have to put in in the time and, and the work. And 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 what we get to is, you know, going back to to five years ago, um, prior to my my first year, we were two and eight. The year before that, they were one and nine. So, you know, I've got seniors now that barely remember those times. So we we go back and talk about those times sometimes, and and, and we discuss. Hey, there's been a lot of groundwork laid for you guys to have the success that you've had, and and the two and eighteen, um, they're just as important as, as anybody else because they they had to lay a foundation to, to get us where we are now, and uh, and even Friday night after after the semifinal game, there were some of those two and eight two and eight two and eighteen guys down here waiting on us and, and just cheering us on and happy for us and and that tells you as a coach you're like man something's right. Something's going right here because there's no jealousy there. There's no – those guys are like, man, congratulations. I, you know, proud of you, coach. Um, you know, uh, best of luck, so forth and so on. And and that that in itself says, hey, you're doing something right in, in your profession. No doubt. Yeah. Have those guys here, they, they kind of did lay the bricks for what we see this year's team as no uh, in that foundation. Coach, was there a moment in time maybe before the playoffs started or during these playoffs where you said – Okay, they, they, they've got it. They, something something's happened now. They, they're getting it now. You know, I, I I've had you, you really need a psychology degree to, to coach nowadays because you, <laughs> you you have to figure you have to figure your kids out and um and I'm very much uh I, I'm very regimented. I'm very you know hey we're gonna we're gonna you know pregame we're gonna be dressed the same. We're gonna be you know we don't do a lot of we don't do a lot of wristbands and all this other stuff, and uh, you know, the kids can wear gloves and stuff like that. But I, but I'm very regimented in what I do, and um, you know, pre I, I used to be the guy that hey, pregame meal, don't say a word. Well, our guys, our guys, they they play so much better loose, and and they have learned how to be loose and stay within my limits. There you go, and that and that's the key, you know. I, I explain to them, hey, you guys can talk during pregame meal, but like nothing you talk about should be so funny that you're like cackling out loud, right. you know. Something's funny, ha ha, you know, move on. So, so I think that development in in them and, and understanding, hey, coach is going to let us be us as long as we conform to within his rules, and, and that's the key, you know. When 
when we go in after warm-ups and, and our guys are there's music in the locker room and our guys are kind of bobbing their head and getting ready and they got, got a smile on their face <clears throat> i feel good about <clears throat> about what's about to happen when they're sitting there and not saying a word and and they look you know when they have that serious look yeah. that, that's when i worry so <laughs> Uh, it's a it's a little bit different. So so psychology wise, it's it's kind of it's taken a while to figure them out. But um, but that's where you know that's where the the uh, the leadership comes in and, and just the ability to to turn it on and be ready to go. Um, our, our preparation has gotten a lot better too, especially since the playoffs have started and and understanding you know again you go back to 16, 17 year old kids um, and explaining to them the importance of film study. Like, hey, you can learn so much from film and, and you won't roll an ankle or get a bruise watching film. So um, trying try to instill that in our kids and even instill it in our young kids, you know. Um, it, it does have, not a negative, not a negative of it, but like my eighth grade son watches a bunch of film of the varsity and then comes and tries to tell me what I need to do. <laughs> but, you know, that that's a little tough sometimes, so. <laughs> um, but but he's he's watching and he's understanding the game so so he's you know they're putting forth that effort a lot of those young guys are watching film too so uh, so that's it's it's all about learning it's all about continuing to to one appreciate the game but two continuing to learn the game and continuing to to put in that effort for for the betterment of the game that. That is uh, sharpening your skills one hundred and one right there. Like you yeah. said, you don't turn an ankle or get a concussion from watching. <laughs> That's fishing. right. You may get a headache. Yeah. That'd be about it. Uh, now, coach, last week, I don't even know how to explain. You know, coming into that Highland home, uh, people had it picked fifty fifty at best across yeah. the state. I don't even know what the point spread on the website was, mm-hmm. but it was very close. And you guys just took care of business, and it was over early. Really, I mean, in all aspects uh i know coaches speak you don't want to hear that but right, yeah. when you're up 35 to zero there uh you probably felt pretty comfortable i know as a coach you don't feel yeah. comfortable till the fourth right, quarter but right. but man what happened to, to spark that uh you know like right off right off the bat um we wanted we wanted to defer we didn't defer and that's you know that's not a game killer we we, we didn't win the toss so we weren't able to defer so uh we get the ball you know, ideally in my head, hey, we're going to play defense first. We're going to try and get a stop, get a good field position, go score. So that didn't happen. So it kind of kind of changes up your mentality a little bit. Uh, but we get the ball, and, you know, four plays in, we go and score. And I, I'm on the headset, so I'm like, wow, like we're, we're pretty locked in right now. And, and um, you know, some of my assistants agreed, and, and some were like, well, you know, we still got to play defense. I said, I understand all that, but – but like we're we're fairly locked in. This is, you know, um, and then things just continue. We get a defensive stop. Uh, we get the ball back. the The big thing was on our second drive, we turned the ball over, and we put the ball on the ground. and And that's where you see a lot of maturity for my guys. Is they didn't like they didn't just like throw their hands up and get frustrated. They they just went right back to work. Next play. Yeah, next play, and that's. That that's a again that's one of my one of my little little quirky sayings is next play like move on you know so we would move on um, and, and I'm the guy you know I, I'm the guy that hey if you fumble you know I I don't want you to fumble but I'm gonna put you back in there I'm not gonna hold you out you know go back in there and, and, and do what you can do you know I know you didn't say oh here's the ball you know it wasn't, it wasn't something you just wanted to give up so uh, but th- but that. Um, that overcoming that little bit of adversity right there and getting a stop, and then going down the field and scoring again. So uh, <clears throat> it was it was a big big like like when you when you draw it up and you say hey if, if everything can go right we can do this. Um, and on, on special teams, uh, one of our young guys again, uh, Daytron Wells, a young kid that we're we're on him adamantly about hey man you you can be really special, but you've got to work you got to work got to work. He's you know, gets the special teams. He's on some of our special teams. Sprints down the field, does his job. They bobble the kick, and he dives on the on the ball. We get the ball on like the 17 yard line and go score. So, plays like that are important. You know, <clears throat> uh, we have a little freshman, Gavin Vick, that's on on kickoff, running down the field, making tackles, um, and and just kids stepping up like that. And and that's some of the stuff that we've talked about during the season. Is young guys, earn your stripes. Help these guys out because. I can put if I can trust a freshman to put on kickoff to go down the field and make a play, that's that's 
a, a rep that I don't have to have a two-way starter out there um, and he can get a breath and then when we go out on defense guess what he's got another another solid rep in him because he got a rep off so um, but but the <clears throat> fast start uh, was huge I, I thought Devin Harvey and, and Kamar Harris played outstanding on offense uh, Devin's uh, Devin has matured and grown so much as a quarterback and, and made some really good decisions, uh, made some great decisions Friday night. Uh, he did. At one point in time, he rolled out to his right, and uh, I'm screaming, just run, you know, run, get what you can get. And he sees Richard Weed in the corner of the end zone on the other side of the field and throws it up. And uh, like, it, it was an amazing play, like just seeing him throw across his body and the strength that he had. and. And uh, uh, during the time, it felt like the ball stayed in the air forever. And, I, and I, there was a defender there. Like I thought, man, this is gonna get picked off. I hope, I hope Richard makes the makes the tackle. And, uh, and like he goes right over his head, and, and Richard catches it in the end zone. So, um, but just just throws like that. And then later in the game, um, it's a third and long, and uh, <clears throat> he gets out of the pocket again. All the, the DBs are chasing receivers. He tucks in, gets the first down. You know, so. So that maturity, man, has, has really, really made him made him a, a much better football player. And then uh, Kamor Harris has really uh, – last year had a great, great year. Uh, and then this year he was hampered by an injury early on. And, you know, we're, <clears throat> we're in the we're, – we're headed into the 15th game of the year. Uh, Kamor has only played 11 games. And early in the season, he didn't get to play, and he's still putting up major numbers in the backfield, uh, running the ball for us. Uh, just a big, big kid, weight room guy, loves the weight room. Uh, and, and he's a junior. Dev, Devin and Kamor are both juniors. So uh, you, you look at a situation like that, and you're like, man, you know, these guys are playing well, and we get them for another year. So, um, But the, the leadership of those guys is huge for our program. And, and again, they're on both sides of the ball. They, you know, both of those guys are definitely stars, and to have those two guys coming back is going to be phenomenal. Yeah. Not only for your program, but the city here as yeah. well. Now, Coach, uh, your life forever changed last Friday when you you going to make this. These kids are never going to forget going to the state championship game. How do you keep these guys level-headed, and, and what is your, your guys' mindset heading into the state championship game? Uh, you know, as far as the level-headed part of it, our, our guys, it's kind of scary because I don't know if it's hit. I don't know if it's hit them yet. And um, to be honest with you, I don't know if it's if it's really hit me yet. I, my 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 thing is I've stayed so busy that I don't know I don't know that I've I've even thought about it you know and, and it's uh, there's so many people that have reached out there's people that have reached out to me that I haven't talked to in years you know congratulations kept up with you you know and so forth and so on and I appreciate that and and, uh, and cherish those those uh, um, text messages and calls and things like that but like I don't know that it is it is resonating with our guys and that's that's one key about this week and and being able to get down there a day early and, and uh, we're going to go to the 5A game and, and just get in the stadium and let the guys look around and, and soak it up and you know we, we want this to be a uh, we want this to be a business trip um, but it's also the experience of it and um, and you, you know you go back talk you talk about Fife again Fife has been there you know. Coach Benfield, he's probably got he's probably got his schedule like ironed out, like exactly how he wants it, and, and, and knows exactly what he wants to do. And um, I'm sitting down there in Montgomery Saturday, and I'm like, um, all right, what do I do now? How do I do this? And <laughs> and, and they prove uh, Auburn Opelika provides you hosts, and our hosts, man, they're 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 really solid, and they they've uh, man they've walked us through every step of the way and helped us out, and uh, those guys are are have been lifesavers for us because they. Well, after we set the bracket, I came back and they got, uh, they got all the. You know, they had like an itinerary set up with one of my coaches, and um, we kind of fixed a few things, and boom, we're ready to go. So, uh, but we're looking forward to it, and and, and the excitement of it. Uh, our guys are focused. Our guys are, are locked in right now, and, and uh, ready for practice. Um, and and you know we'll we'll go from there. We we have a lot to. Well, we have a lot to work on. Again, you know, both sides of the ball. Fife, Fife does a good job on, on both sides of the ball. You're talking about teams giving up less than 100 points in 14 games. Uh, we, we definitely have our work cut out for us. Coach, what is your final thoughts heading into this? <clears throat> Just anything you'd like to say before we shut the interview down? Because I know you got to get back to work. Yeah. Um, 
I, you know, I, I think the big thing is just just the support that that has gone on here. Really, really appreciative of it. Appreciative of uh, coaching as a brotherhood and uh, the coaches that have reached out and just congratulated me and, and um, been there for the uh, to you know, hey, coach, you know, we'll, we'll go get it. You know, best of luck to you and things like that. And that, that really shows the brotherhood of coaching that there is. Um, you know, even even as far as like the meeting Saturday with, with Coach Benefield, great guy, good conversation. You know, there's no, uh, we're, we're two guys trying trying to trying to do the same thing. We're trying to we're trying to help young people be better better men and uh, and utilize sport to do that. So, um, but you know, again, just just thanking thanking everybody for the support. Uh, this is truly more than about football. Uh, and, and for this community and these kids, it's more than about football. And, uh, they may not realize that right now, but at some point in time they will. And, and I hope I'm there for them to share their stories and their experiences of all this. Coach, I appreciate you as always, man. And I know you're a guy who uh, definitely lets Christ lead the way. Yes, sir. And, and I think that's why a lot of good things come your way, Coach, and your yep. family and your team as well. I appreciate all you do and uh, appreciate you coming on with us today. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you.